Does adding math to your engine add power? Well, we are going to find out in this video. Welcome back to the channel. My name is Ale. I have been modifying this 228i and the goal is to reach 400 horsepower. There are many ways you can gain power on your engine. One of it could be tear down the engine, up upgrade all the internal components of the motor, or do some modifications such as this one, install a water methanol kit. You can also do a flex fuel. I didn't go with the flex fuel because it looks like there isn't one that is fully compatible with my system, which is the N20. So in this video, it's a step-by-step -step how you can do this on the N20. I will show you where I am going to place this and how safely you can also run all the lines and internal components of this kit. This is the AEM kit. There is also Snow Performance and uh, many other kits, but I prefer going with this one. Reason I went with this is just because of the controller interface. I like the controller interface compared to the Snow Performance controller, which I don't like. All right, I haven't opened this box before, so you and I are also going to experience the unboxing. So we are experiencing the unboxing together. When you buy the kit, this is how it comes with. This is a full kit, so it's not just like one part and then you have to order another part. All right, uh, what we have in the box is we got a tank. This is 1.15 gallon and we got some cable management stuff. We have these electrical lines and we have these other mounting screws and every other electrical things that you have that you will need. And you also have zip ties and we have our, our pump. We have the pump. This is the pump. Now looking at this very close, there is one thing that I forgot to show you is this controller. I love this controller. I think the pictures online don't really give justice to how beautiful this controller looks. I was thinking it was kind of like old school, but I really like the way this one looks. And uh, the controller has two knobs. You have the PSI start, like when do you want to start? in just injecting the methanol like at what psi level and uh, at what level you want to go full sand this is a progressive spray so meaning when you start let's say i want the methanol to start injecting when i reach six psi for example at six psi you have like a certain uh, you have a spray that goes on and then when you go to let's say because i'm running at uh, 21 psi so probably my boost will go up to 15 no 15 maybe 10 psi when i reach 10 psi i will start probably maybe 15 when i reach 15 psi i will start blasting all of it but uh, my tuner will actually tell me exactly how to do it you will notice that there isn't a manual here however there is a qr code actually pause this video right now and scan this qr code so that you can get the instructions all right, now you know what comes in the box. Next is to jump on the car, figure out where we are going to place it. Now it's time to figure out where are we going to mount this. I noticed that some people, they are using this washer fluid tank instead of using this one. I'm going to show you the proper way where you can mount this. All right, so the tank is going here. This is where we're going to mount it, but I will tell you why we chose this one. Because if we look at here, there is a bolt here. There is a bolt right here, and there is another bolt that side. And this bolt, we're going to unscrew it, and we're going to fabricate a plate that will go here, and that will mount our bottle. I will show you in a moment. Uh, this thing will make a lot of sense when I start cutting the plates and making sure we get the proper measurements for the plates and, and pass it here. Okay, now for the pump, we are going to put this pump underneath here. It's safe because uh, for the most part, if it leaks, it's going to drip down. So we should be fine. And uh, the line is going to pass through here. I'll show you in a moment. Now it is recommended the pump has to be lower than your tank. So if you look at where the pump is and uh, we look at the level of the 
the tank you see that the pump is lower than uh, than the tank so we are very good on placing the pump here the pump is most likely to be the easiest one to place and uh, I could also put this pump in front but I already have other stuff that I'm using uh, for this one that's why I'm not putting it at the uh, at the front so I'm going to put my pump over here now to mount the tank I'm going to fabricate a mounting adapter this mounting adapter you will see it's gonna have like a, a plus shape somewhere something like that you will see yourself uh, when I finished that's what I'm going to fabricate and uh, we're going to use it to mount the uh, the tank so just bear with me follow along the way I'm going to design this one All right, so I am going to use this to help me make the 90 degree angle that I want to do. All right, and then I will just do this, bend this guy. And I'll just bend it this way. All right, I think this is good. It's exactly 90 degree that I, I was hoping to make. You see, doing it this way is way much easier than uh, cutting it. And if you have a smaller piece, it's gonna be very difficult for you to make the angle. So this works out really good. All right, so I took the measurements and uh, I am going to cut. Just need to place this here and I'll do my cut. Right, the first piece is done but we have we are not done yet i have to make a hole in the middle here these are all the pieces i need to fabricate the mounting brackets it's gonna be like this this is how it's going to lay out and the bottle will sit like this All right, so I'm going to test it out here and uh, we are going to open this bolt. BMW like using T40, so we are going to use T40 to unbolt this and test out our mounting bracket. Yes. All right, and here are the brackets. You can see the way I did them, if I put them like this. This is the bracket, the way they're going to sit, and uh, I also have this one. This is the, the plate where I'm going to sit the, the pump. The pump is going to sit here. I will show you when I mount everything. So, this is where we get, and uh, I just I clean it with soapy water so that it can look a little bit nicer than uh, the way it was because it was really greasy and all that. So, with the magic of editing, much better so it's time to mount this stuff so i'm going to mount this and uh, after that we are going to take care of the uh the feeding lines as well as the electrical lines because there are a lot of lines we need to take care of one other thing i did i went to home depot and i picked up a different set of nut and bolt because the one that comes with um with the kit they're either too long or they're just not gonna work with the way i want to get this thing done so uh check the description to know exactly which one i got and uh we just we are going to feed this right here and feed this like this Okay, I have all the four bolts in and uh, we get the plate. 
and this plate is going to be like this this is how you're going to place it on the plate it's going to sit just like that and uh, from there you get your knot first you put the washers put all four washers now you get your 11 millimeter secure one side and then on the other side you tighten this I made a little bit of a modification into the plate and I want to talk about it. You may see that I scrapped the paint on this side here. Reason for that is because we are going to put the neutral side, sorry, not the neutral, the negative side of the battery is going to tap into this side here and uh, we want this plate to conduct electricity. And also if we, if I want to get any other uh, negative or uh, you know grand wire uh, I, will, I can always get it from this plate as well so that's why I scrapped the paint and I actually did it on both sides this side and uh, the back here as well so I did that on both sides so if you will be following this plate I will ask you to do the same thing you will see that I also dented a little bit on here so it came here it get inside a little bit reason for that is because I want that cable that comes from the battery to sit here to sit here intact it has a little bit of a hook i would say so that hook is the one i also wanted to hook here properly so that when i when i tighten it it's gonna be really tight so i am going to mount this and i will show you how this is done all right so this cable which goes into the battery line this cable is going to sit here like this i'll show you so i'll put this guy here i'll put it here and uh, i'll get this one this cable will sit right here like that like that all right like that and uh, i can now secure it with the bolt all right it's time to do the electrical wiring but there are a couple of things that i additionally outsource i want to show you this is the inline filter i got it from amazon i also got this uh, Saloni. this is a 12 volt and uh, it's literally low on power it doesn't consume a lot of power uh, the reason I need this is because if you are not running meth, this one prevents for the meth to just flow into the engine. So we don't want to uh, have water in our engine. So this one will stop it. This one is, uh, it's called normally closed. It only opens when this guy is on. When this one is off, this one is also off. It's not needed, but it is recommended. So I decided to go with this one. AEM does sell this one as well. So if you are not comfortable of using this one, you can get the one that AEM sells you but with this one I, I am saving about like a, I don't know four times the price of what AEM is selling it for so this one I'm saving quite a lot of bucks and it comes with its own feed fittings as well you see that it comes with the same fittings that goes into the uh, the AEM hose or you can get this additional one which will go directly into this so I will show you how to connect this one and this is part of the electrical connection i will show you in a bit i will also need this i got this from um, from walmart you can see this is a walmart brand hyper tough we'll need this one to locate the fuse when the ignition is turned on which will power this device because this one comes on when the fuse is on all right just a refresher remember when i was mentioning about this line here this electrical connection that goes into the ground of the car you see that i connected it directly into the ground and that's where the plate of the motor is so this is this one is secure by that one bolt it's really strong it's not gonna move at all and uh on the and uh this one is where the liquid comes in comes in here and go out and the lines are here you can follow them one line this one is the one that goes in front to the charge pipe and this one is the one that comes to the the water tank i mean the bottle tank 
Okay, next is get your multimeter and turn it on by putting it to uh, our DC volt and put it at 20 uh, like that. And then uh, first we have to check the battery, produce, how many volt the battery is producing. So you get your red one, the red terminal, put it on the red side of the battery. And then this one, put it to the black side, negative side. We are reading 12 volt, 12.65, that's what we are reading. So we are going to move into the fuse box right there and we're going to locate which one uh, comes on when the ignition is on. Right now the ignition is off. So it's a trial, <laughs> it's a trial and error. So we're just gonna check which one uh, comes on when we turn the ignition on. So the way it works, you have your negative, the black one, put it on the negative side of the battery. You can put it anywhere else uh, where you can get a ground. I have ground over here and I'll be tapping in each of these fuses. I have zero reading on this one, zero reading on this one, zero reading on this one, zero reading on this one. Okay, I've got reading on this one and this 15, I have zero reading. Okay, I think I found one that has, that I can tap into when the ignition is off. I have 15, 10, five, I have quite a bit, a lot of them. So I got one which is the 15 one. And uh, because our controller also takes 15, I now have the ignition on and uh, the reading on this one is zero, zero. Let me see which one will give me a reading. So the same process, you put this one on negative and then let's go on 15, yes. This one was off when the ignition was turned off and I'm reading 12.14 and this one as well, this one as well. I'm reading 12.14 and the other one are always on. So I think I'm good on this one. And this one here, the 15 is the one that I'm going to use because this is the one that's giving me the continuity. This one, all of these, these three, one, two, three, are giving me continuity. So I can tap in any of the, either of these. But because I can see the controller requires 15, I'm gonna use this 15 one here. All right, so you get the kit that we bought and uh, pick the smaller one, this one here. There are, I think there are four of these or two. I didn't count, but totally there are 12, uh, 12 in the kit, but you just get one of the smaller one like this. And uh, you get this 15 one, this one, it's also in the kit. Like, yeah, it comes in the kit like this one. Take this one, the smaller one, and then plug it in here like this. Just press it inside, okay? And then you get the 15 one that we got which is giving us continu continuity when we turn the ignition on. And then you take this one and you place it right here, like this. See, this is exactly how it, so it should look. And then we're going to, pre uh, and then we're going to take this one and place it inside the fuse box. This is where we're going to tap that because that's where we removed it. And I am going to get this and plug it in, in here like this or like this. Whichever direction you really want, it doesn't matter. All right, now I'm working on the solenoid and uh, we have the black and red wire. We know that black is ground or negative and uh, red is positive. But we do have the fittings. We have these fittings and it also comes with the, uh, you know, the plumber's tape. This one, we're going to use that so that we don't have any leak or whatsoever. Uh, I've done a lot of, quite of plumbing stuff, so I know exactly what this is. So basically, you have to follow the thread. So the threads go this way. So this guy, you have to do it kind of like counterclockwise, some, something like that. And this is good enough. 
and you get our solenoid and you place it like that and you place it like this we're going to tighten it in a minute but for now this is how we do it and you get the other side it comes in the set still so you don't have to worry about these fittings because they come in a set of this one we do the same thing so to pass through the firewall we are going to tap into here we're not drilling you'll see in a mo in a minute i'm going to show you so take out this cover this cover you can use a 10 millimeter and just turn it uh cut around you turn it uh it's a quarter turn and uh, you take this out and then as you remove as you remove that you see that there is this grommet here this grommet is actually tapped into the firewall on the passenger side so what i would advise you is use a pick tool to remove that all right so you see where this screw is uh, tapped into I actually pass it through the foam that is uh, the, the foam insulation that is inside the cabin and uh, you have to have a very long screwdriver this is a very long screwdriver to make it easier to pull in the cable so uh, this i pass it through inside the cabin and uh, we will see it in a minute and uh, we're going to tap the all the cables that we're going to need uh, that will pass here and uh, and also the vacuum hose as well so uh, let me show you in the cabin now all right inside the cabin you will see that this is the screwdriver you see inside the cabin this is the screwdriver that we pass in so i'm going to wrap all the cables that i will need to go through in there and uh and that will give us a way to do whatever we want to do on the uh on the engine bay. So this is the new setup, this is the hose that goes to the front and uh, coming from the pump here and this one will stay intact, we'll go on the same trajectory up to the tank and um, I pass it underneath this one here, I pass it underneath here, it's not suffocated so it's freely, it's moving freely, this is what we want, we don't want it to be tight and from this side the cable is passed here it's actually hidden you won't even see it it's passing under under this compartment uh this piece here is i pass it through underneath and it also passes here uh somewhere here you can see there is a little bit of uh, curves and stuff like that but i made it through it just passes straight so it's not curved or one whatnot i pass it inside the insulation underneath here and uh it will go uh this way which comes here and uh, it's to travel all the way to where our uh, our stuff is this one here and uh, we're going to pull it from that side i'm about to pass it through the insulation or through the firewall and what i'm going to do is i will just use this one the electrical tape and uh, tap it together with the screwdriver and then pull the screwdriver from uh, the engine bay Alright, now to make my life easier, I'm going to pull everything at once. So what I will do, I will get the controller as well and uh, pass the controller cables uh, under the glove box here. I'm going to pass all the controllers and the boost controller. 
as well so that when I pull this I just pull it and it was uh, from that side so this is where I pass the cables on the glove box I will show you in a minute how I did that in the glove box and I just wrapped everything together like this so that it's easier for me to pull them around and uh, there was already a preset of a hole that I just step into and uh, pass this every pass all the cables in there uh, this is the boost hose that I passed and uh, this is the cable now not all of the cable are going to be passed through the firewall it's only a handful of cables but one of it is a positive i could run the positive from the back but i'm not gonna do that i will tap the positive from the front you see that in the glove box there is uh, this thing here you can just pop pop this out and that's where i passed in the uh, the cables these cables so it's easier and uh, we're not drilling anything so and uh, the boost this is the boost line and the boost line is the soft one so you use the soft one not the hard one not the nylon one and uh, you connect the boost soft right away i think it's easier for me to just connect it right away i don't need to wait i want to have the same length that's what i'm aiming for so you get the boost line and you connect the boost line just push it in it should go Just like that, very easy peasy, straightforward. Grab the boost line connected here, and uh, this one also be connected like this. So what we pass into the firewall is the black wire, the red wire, and uh, the white and brown wire. The white and brown wire is used for the solenoid. This is the screwdriver. I connected it with the tape. These are the cable that are going to pass through the firewall and it will go underneath there. Now, the way these cables are passed, you can see that everything is passed through. We're not drilling anything. Uh, this one goes into the glove box and from the glove box, that's where everything passed through. You see that? So this was covered by this little thing here. You see that? So I pop this out and pass the cable through there. Very easy, everything looks just like OEM. This is the screwdriver that I'm going to pull. And hopefully it passes through. Yes, it's coming without problems. And I am gently pulling it, gently pulling it. And I have everything in just like that. Very easy. And if you're wondering how long is the screwdriver, this is how long the screwdriver is. <laughs> All right, this is the solenoid. This is where I place the solenoid. You can see line in and line out. The tube that comes from the pump, we're going to pass it in there and then uh, it goes out and goes to the charge pipe. Now, notice that I placed the solenoid up here on the engine bay. The reason I did that because we want this to be as close as possible to the uh, to the nozzle because we don't want the uh, the liquid that is on the line to be too far from the pump uh, i mean from the uh, from the nozzle because if that liquid goes into your engine and the engine is not working or whatever we don't want that to happen it can cause some issues into your engine right, so i have the grommet i'm going to pass all the cables through this grommet as well so that we can uh, protect the firewall All right, so I have the grommet set and now I am passing in the, uh, the this one and uh, this is the longest we can go. And you see now the importance why I ordered an extra line because the lines is not long enough to reach to the, uh, the nozzle. So this is how far it got with one set that we bought uh, with, um, with the kit. So you pretty much have to order an extra one. So I will pass it through here and uh, it will go to the solenoid. 
I am going to remove this one to give me more slack to work on. Cora turn. Cora turn. Cora turn. And another Cora turn here. And another Cora turn. All right, all I need is a space to work on. All right, now I certainly can cut this cable. You have to cut it straight. That's why I'm not using a scissors. I want it to be straight. All right, so I am passing the cable, the additional cable that we bought, this one, and I'm going to pass it this side to go all the way that side. And uh, this is the one that connects to the nozzle. So it's gonna be very short one. You can pass it any way you want, but as long as it reaches the other side. All right, so I am going to connect the solenoid. Uh, just like that. All right, here is what got achieved. The cable, this is the positive cable. I've passed this through here and you can see I put it very nicely. It looks just like OEM. And uh, the black one, which is the positive, goes all the way here and uh, passes through here you can see that it goes underneath this bar the reason i went underneath the bar because one day i may happen to remove this bar so it's going to be easier for me to work around here it passed through passed through here and goes all the way to the negative so this one is the ground or negative however you want to call it this is where it's tapped into don't worry about these other cables this one is um it's a retrofit that I did for the lights, but uh, it's a video I never released and uh, don't worry about it. I don't actually even use this Angel retrofit light. You see, these are the Angel retrofit lights I did last year and uh, they work, but uh, there was something that I didn't know how to do it. And actually doing this project helped me to figure out how to fix it properly. However, I have to redo these lights i have to redo them because uh, at night i see nothing so that's something for another time anyways back to our project here for the math you can see the cable fits exactly like oem i may wrap this cable as well just to make sure anything doesn't interfere with the heat and whatnot so i will see i will probably wrap this cable as well other than that this is connected you will notice that there are uh two reds that went through there the reason for that is because of the solenoid also takes the power from here and then uh, the solenoid goes all the way to there and the black side of the solenoid this one the black one is the one that you connect to the brown and white this is brown and white that comes from the uh, aem controller so i just tacked it in there it's not on the way and uh, it doesn't disturb anything at all so cable management on that side i don't care and uh, here inside all the cables are still here i haven't touched anything here yet and this is what i want to get done now and um, show you what the next step is on this wiring but on here you can see the cables are there i have not touched anything yet because i still have to wrap them and uh, make it look nice and neat next up is to get this yellow cable connected to the back the reason i'm doing it to the back is because i couldn't tap into the front the front 
does not give me a way to close the lid unfortunately i don't want to mess with the lid of the the ignitions not the ignition but the fuses i don't want to mess with the lid the lid doesn't close and i don't want to force anything at the back it's going to be easier to just have everything at the back and uh, we should be good to go this is exactly what i'm going to do so you see that I made it easier for myself for the cables not to lay around. I just uh, tacked it or connected it together like this with the black tape so that this cable stays intact and easier for me to press and pull whichever cable I want. As I do this, it's also important to know which cable goes where. These two, the violet and gray, you use them for the LED status. So I will leave it here because in front, over here i will figure out where i want to place this led status I, I will not touch it and uh, the orange and the pink is the one that goes to the pump the white is the one that goes to the uh, to the back as well and uh, we have the yellow and we have the browns all right i am at the back here the first thing i'm going to connect is these two cables the orange and the pink cable the pink cable will connect to the red of the pump and the orange cable will connect to the black of the pump now as we do this i recommend you to remove the negative pole of the battery all right we have that connected our next step is to get the brown cable goes to the tank and you get the white cable goes to the tank and you get the yellow cable which will tap into the fuse that comes on when the ignition is on so i will connect this one which is the yellow one This is the cable that I'm going to tap into the fuse on our fuse box. I created a longer extension because I will be needing this for other projects that I have for this car. So I have a very uh, a longer cable that I'm going to use to tap into the fuse. And you have to make sure both fuses are 15 because we tap into the one that is 15. Brown connects to brown, white connects to white on the sensor, this sensor here. All right, I've got everything connected, all the cables temporarily connected. N next is to have the water in the tank and then put back the negative battery, turn on the ignition and test out the flow. Right now the controller does not show anything. Now let's turn on the ignition and see what we get. The ignition is on and uh, we have the status showing that number one, you see it's flashing one, that means low fluid, which is correct. You can see I added water and it's all the way up here. This is just water because we are, we are testing and we have to test everything before we can uh, close up the rest of the, uh, the car. I've turned on the ignition and you can see the LED status is green. Let me get up close if you can see that. There it is. The ignition is turned on it's green so the level the water level is good that's where the sensor is in case you were wondering where exactly is the sensor this is where the sensor is you can see that all right this is the hose and uh, my controller is right here i'm going to press test and let's see if we can get the water coming through this side i see something happening there's a leak in the pump, I have to fix that. So let me do that real quick. Let me uh, turn off, I turned off the car already. I will disconnect the battery and uh, fix the leak that I see on the pump. I found out what was causing the leak is uh, this side, the outside was not pushed in correctly. So that's why I was having those issues. So let's, uh, let's go ahead and uh, test this out again. 
Uh, the ignition is on, the stairs shows on. And let me put my bucket here. And I'll press the test button. Everything is working just as expected. So I'll press this again. We good. There we go. All right, so we test it out. Everything is working. We don't have a leak anymore. So we should be good. The next thing I want to do is to tap into the boost and uh, and also put the nose the nozzle this is the boost step that i got from aliexpress i am going to place it where i mentioned where you put the boost sensor oh yeah the vacuum sensor the boost sensor i'm going to tap it there and uh tighten this and this is the nozzle that we are going to place the nozzle comes in the kit the aem kit So first I'm going to get this boost line. I am not cutting this boost line and keeping it the way it is. This is the, the boost line that came with the kit and I'll get my boost tap and then force it inside. And notice that there is a, a gasket on the bottom of the, the boost tap that will tap into the charge pipe so you may want to do it this way and you get the sensor and you tap it like this press it until you hear it click see it clicks all right here's the nozzle you set right here and then you use it a uh, 13 millimeter wrench to tighten this there 13 millimeter and you should be good to go. All right. And I'll get this portion, push it inside the nozzle. And that's a wrap folks, I hope you learned something. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and leave a comment below, I always attend them. I'll catch you on the next one, peace out.